Last week, I posted a summary of Managing Multiple Sclerosis Naturally, a self-help guide to living with MS by Judy Graham, one of the early pioneers of lifestyle and alternative treatment of multiple sclerosis. In this video, I will give you my personal review of the book. Let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Now, I should start with a little bit of a conflict of interest statement. I am a traditionally trained Western doctor, so to speak, and so this book is an alternative book uh, in term advocating a lot of alternative medical treatments, so I'm potentially biased against it. Also, in terms of the lifestyle recommendations I make, I would be somewhat closer to Dr. Roy Swank or Dr. George Jelinek from Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis. And so I may be a little bit biased against her, but I'll do my best to be objective. Now, I read the book and I made extensive notes and comments and things like that. And what I would say is this book is extremely well known by other people who are interested in lifestyle and multiple sclerosis. This was published in 2010, but still very relevant today. And a lot of other authors mention her. And she has a close relationship with Matt and Ashton Embry, as I mentioned in the prior video. And by the way, if you wanted a little bit more information about a summary of the book, I'll put up a card and you can go ahead and click the link. But just to give you a brief overview, she advocates a essentially a paleo diet, avoiding gluten grains and avoiding dairy and legumes. And she advocates eating a lot of whole foods, such as fruits and vegetables, chicken, fish, and other game meats, and avoiding any potential food allergens, which could trigger your MS. Now, the strength of the book is she tries to provide a theoretical explanation of the reasoning behind her recommendations, and she tries to provide as much, as much evidence as possible with a lot of citations where applicable. But she's very open-minded. She considers a lot of different ideas, and she's not dogmatic. She suggests, this is what I did. You could try something different. You may have different food sensitivities, for example. And she talks about a lot of different alternative treatments, some of them very briefly because they're very rare or obscure alternative treatments. So it's quite useful as a reference book if you're looking to look up a certain alternative treatment and see what data is available. Now, she talks about what she did and what other notable people did, and she sort of pays homage to Ashton Embry along with Terry Walls and some of the other original authors of Lifestyle Recommendations in Multiple Sclerosis. Now, one thing that I should say is that I interacted with Judy on Twitter, and she said that she actually had a little bit of a change of heart, and now she would advocate perhaps more of a functional medicine approach, and that she would actually uh, consider even disease modifying therapy and that she would consider consuming more saturated fats and currently she consumes coconut oil and ghee and she's not as confident in her original ideas and also she regrets that maybe she wasn't 100 percent strict with the diet and that she should have focused a little bit more on compliance now to make a few criticisms of the book Although I like that she's very open-minded, it's really hard to know what to do. If you want specific advice, this is perhaps not the book for her, for you, because she just talks about so many different ideas, and some of them are very dubious. To give an example, she talks about applied kinesiology, and this is uh, supposed to be a form of allergy testing where you hold a potential allergen in a cylinder, and the kinesiologist pushes down on your right arm, and if the allergen has weakened your body, your arm is supposed to give way. But if it holds up, then you're not allergic to that substance. Needless to say, this is highly dubious. There's no specific evidence behind it. So I really think that we should reject that kind of methodology. And if she doesn't criticize everything, we don't really know what to do. Also, although there are a lot of citations throughout the book, there's some areas where there are just no citations whatsoever. It's sort of arbitrary where she chooses to cite things and where she doesn't cite things. And, uh, you know, a lot of the descriptions of alternative practices are extremely brief. She's quite a good writer, and the first part of her book is extremely well written. I like how she talks about her personal story and about the stories of other people, and she includes a lot of anecdotes from other contributors. Uh, but, you know, it's really hard to write well when you're just writing a paragraph at, at a time and then changing topics in a couple paragraphs at a time. And so, although it's very informative, the second half of the book is not as readable, I would say. Also, some of the inferences from her sources are a little bit dubious. 
uh, I can't really check every source, but for example, on page 277, she talks about dental caries, it states that they're linked with multiple sclerosis. Just by coincidence, I happen to be familiar with that citation, so I double-checked her. And it is actually true that dental caries were weakly linked to MS in that study, but the odds ratio was only about 1.2 to 1, so an extremely weak effect. Also, even though the section was about how amalgam fillings could be dangerous because they contain mercury, in that particular citation, amalgam fillings were actually not linked to MS, and mercury levels were not linked to MS. So it's a little bit disingenuous to mention that particular study and just pick out exactly the piece of data that you think favors your point. Though to be fair, she does talk about how some pieces of evidence do refute the idea that amalgams are linked to MS, though she doesn't really talk about them in detail. But anyways, to summarize, I do think it's a good and well written book. I do like how it encourages people to have a healthy lifestyle. I do like how it's open-minded to a lot of different ideas and that she's not dogmatic and doesn't advocate a very specific approach and just tries to give information. However, it does have some drawbacks, as I discussed. And I also appreciate that she's willing to re sort of reflect on it and say that she would make some changes if she were to write it again. Anyways, please post in the comments below if you have read the book and what your thoughts are. And if you have taken to heart any of the suggestions such as the best bet diet or alternative medical treatments, and what are your experiences with those treatments?